and uh, we're getting into some fascinating areas and we want to talk about the fall of man and what happened and I would like to approach it from the scientific side this time. It has to do with the very emotional question of uh, when did plants and animals die? When did death come to them? We know that Romans 5 says that death came to man when Adam sinned, but it doesn't say anything about the plants and animals. Okay, so when did the plants and animals, when did death come to them? And uh, in order to talk about that, we've got to talk about something else, and that is when did God institute the second law of thermodynamics? All right, because apparently from the get-go, from in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, that had to be part of the operation. But I'm not sure people understand that, Hugh, and I'd like you to take a moment to explain what is the law of second law of thermodynamics and how does it apply to this whole conversation of sure. what happened when sin came into the world? Well, you're not going to find the second law of thermodynamics in your Bible concordance. But if you go to Romans 8, it talks about how the entire creation is subjected to frustration, subjected to this law of decay. And that's a good description uh, from that perspective of the second law of thermodynamics. The second law says that heat flows from hot bodies to cold bodies. And a consequence of that is increasing disorder in the natural realm. And that's what this text is talking about, how all of creation is subjected to this uh, situation where you start with order and it progresses to disorder. The heat becomes progressively less and less available to perform useful work. But that has certain advantages. Uh, that flow of heat from hot bodies to cold bodies enables proteins to fold, metabolism to operate, stars to burn. It provides a source of energy which enables us to perform physical work. And you notice in Genesis chapter 2 we have Adam working before he sinned. So that tells us the second law was in effect. He was also eating fruit uh, before he rebelled against God. Therefore, the second law was in effect. And you can actually assemble a set of verses throughout the Old and New Testament which make it clear that these laws that God set up to govern the heavens and the earth are fixed. Jeremiah 33, 25 actually says that. The laws that govern the heavens and the earth are fixed. This is something we astronomers observe. As we look far away, back in time, because it takes light to reach us, we're measuring the laws and constants of physics and we see that they have never changed. They're the same value at the very greatest distances in the universe, going back 10, 12 uh, billion years ago as they are today. But the scripture said it first, and God has a reason for setting up these laws of physics. I believe that all the laws and constants of physics were exquisitely designed by God to bring about uh, a theater for an efficient conquest of evil. This is the best situation. In other words, this is the best creation for bringing about a conquest of evil. The perfect creation will come, but this is the perfect creation to bring about that conquest. And the second law in particular is a critical role in enabling that to take place. You go back to Genesis 3. What was the curse? More pain and more work. Well, look how the second law has been designed by God to guarantee that the more we sin, the more work we have to do. And the more we sin, the more pain we experience. So this becomes a disciplinary tool by God to encourage us to depart from evil and to pursue virtue. Not that we can do it. We need God's help. But we do have the laws of physics there to encourage us in that general direction. 